Jason's comment that it, the best strategy may not be all drugs all the time. Um, we're seeing some early clinical trial results that are exploring that from a safety perspective and early uh, efficacy uh, focus uh, perhaps as well. You know, I would suggest that as the trials continue to mature, um, that a novel strategy of actually on and off again targeted therapy, maybe even as little as you know one week on, three weeks off, but really backing it out and not you know pushing, 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 trying to drive resistance to the targeted therapy, and maybe um, you know kind of trying to leverage the positive immunologic effects without you know grinding and forcing the tumor to mm -hmm. adapt uh, you know in immunosuppressive uh, fashion. There is this interesting uh, strategy that's emerged, uh, Jason, and it's actually in a cooperative group trial now. I think it might be of interest um, to, to viewers that that we're actually uh, exploring uh, interrupted schedule uh, of you know BRAF MAC targeted therapy. Um, maybe you could explain a little bit you know the basis for that because this is a cooperative group trial that's you know readily available to community it's investigators. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so uh, Alan Algazi from UCSF is running a trial looking at the rafenib trametinib BRAF MEC combination uh, with an interrupted schedule, with the idea that you would hit the MAP kinase pathway, suppress it, kill tumor cells, but then not keep it on. Definitely. Um, and again, so the idea is that perhaps the response rate probably is going to end up being lower there, but maybe the therapy will have a longer duration of benefit. And yeah, that trial, I, I believe, is open through yep. SWOG. Yep. So through the CTSU mechanism, I think it's open basically to anybody yep. who's doing cooperative group research. And so I think I would absolutely recommend putting patients to that trial. Yeah, I would think that could be a tough pitch for patients, though. Um, you're a patient and you're responding to the drug and then someone says, well, we're going to give you this terrifically effective drug, then we're going to stop it. And what's the duration? Is it a month or eight weeks? Off the top of my head, I don't know. Off? I'd have to check. Yeah, the, it, the PK around Tremendous. I think it's yeah, about a month. It's a fi five weeks on, three weeks off was the final schedule um, versus continuous, which of course is the standard. So it's an interesting, uh, you know, it's a, a, a five weeks of therapy, I think we would all agree, is enough to have an anti-tumor effect. I guess the issue is, is three weeks off therapy enough mm -hmm. to lose some of the right. effect? But, um, yeah. yeah, and I would actually um, sort of push back on your pushback um, <laughs> to say that I, I am really surprised by the number of patients that I get that come to me who are scared to death the day they start taking BRAF inhibitor therapy, mm -hmm. but they're going to progress. And it, it's, so we've lost sight. The, the idea that you might develop resistance eventually has become so pervasive that patients like uh, that I, uh, many that I come in contact, I just have a disproportionate worry. And I'm like, no, you're on this great treatment. Right. You know, a third of the patients will be on it for two right. years. But they want to go on treatment. immunotherapy. You well, see, so they've I, done their reading and they've decided right. they want to take but advantage of the But I think in the, the context the of some of this data that we're getting now that a, a sizable fraction of patients do very, very well for right. a long time on targeted therapy, right. I think we need to push back on that message that everybody needs to get on PD-1. There are other drugs that are very effective. Yeah, the, the other thing about the interrupted schedule that when I talk to patients about this ongoing trial, because of course it, it is still a clinical trial question, is you know there is a retreatment effect. Um, it's been seen with other oncogene targeted therapies and other cancers, EGFR and ALK inhibitors in lung cancer, uh, matinib in, in GIST. I mean, this it, it's known to be the case that if patients are off uh, away from their targeted therapy for a period of time, they can <laughs> resensitize, and it, it does make you think that that it's it's probably not. Uh, absolutely necessary to press, uh, you know, uh, you know, full court press all the time on these targets. But it's a research question; it needs to be addressed. But what? Do, that's an interesting question. I'd love to hear my colleagues' views. In those who've been on a targeted therapy, progressed, presumably went to immunotherapy, and then progressed, say after a six-month interval. Yes, I've been able to go back on BRAF MEC, and I've seen transient responses. Yep, yep. Do you? all feel that these tend to be transient re-responses, or do you see long-term remissions that are meaningful? Transient. Yeah, the, I mean, I think the evidence, even in these other cancers, uh, that Celeste LeBay uh, from France just published a small series of patients like this. There, if you look at the individual patients, treatment period number one versus treatment period number two, the depth of response and duration response is, is less and shorter uh, each time. Um, and that's, I think, that's a consistent point that if you know, if you especially if you treated them until resistance the first time, uh, gave them a period of time off, you you know tried another therapy and then came back, uh, the resistance biology is unfortunately probably not uh, completely gone by the time you get there. Well, uh, you know, let's Renee, let's just touch on one point. Uh, you know, imagine you have a patient in front of you with a BRAF mutation. Um, you've gone through uh, immunotherapy, first line, maybe first and second, depending on you know how you packaged uh, the available treatments. Now they're on BRAF inhibitor therapy. Um, maintaining disease control for a time, but starting to break through um, solitary brain metastasis uh, or, you know, a lesion or two uh, that are, you know, lar larger now than they were at their nadir, but, you know, still smaller than they were at the beginning. 
Um, you know, what's your approach in terms of this concept of treating beyond progression? I mean, is that is that is that something that you feel uh, you know offers you know, be, you know real benefit? I mean, do you have patients who you know have you, you think have actually derived sustained I, benefit I, from I, that? I think yes. Uh, I, I really don't have any doubt, especially with the brain med, as you mentioned. The efficacy of these drugs in the brain, it's there, but it's mm -hmm. less mm -hmm. than, than what it is systemically with, with, with both BRAF inhibitors. Um, so I have no qualms at all about treating a patient with brain metastasis with gamma knife and continuing treatment. Systemically, it's less yeah. um, because yeah. there, you know, they're, that the drug is getting in there. And, um, but still, I think if that's a solitary site of, or two or three of progression that's easy to treat I, right. or resect, I'm happy to do that. But, but I start looking for what else is out there.